Stop right there, criminal scum! Can I help you? Hi everyone, and welcome back to my devlog. If you're new here, I post videos logging the progress of the new third-person looter shooter mobile game I'm developing called Nest. So consider subscribing to follow along. In this video, I'll showcase the progress I made and then go into how I designed my advanced enemy AI. I started off by finalizing the design for the menu and then implemented each section's functionality. For the settings panel, this meant ensuring each adjustment updated the player's preferences and also allowed players to customize their in-game layouts from the base camp. I then created a system for the store panel, which uses scriptable objects to easily add in-app and in-game purchases. I can then quickly update the contents of the store by dragging and dropping created purchases into their relevant databases. Lastly, I designed the profile panel to display the player's experience, statistics, and achievements, which also make use of scriptable objects. The reason why I needed to include the option to log in via Google is because Apple actually insisted on this for the first mobile game I published in order to allow players to transfer their progress over to different devices. Finally, moving on from UI, I tackled the last task I had for the base camp to fill in all of the information for the clothing items. This included the gender and disabled character parts, but most importantly, the names which took hours of Googling to complete. And even after a week, I'm still being haunted by Big Brother. Now that the base camp was pretty much complete, I needed to add a stage between it and the actual game, a loading screen. For this, I decided to create a separate scene specifically used for loading, which executes in the following order. It begins by fading to black on the current scene and then fades in on the loading screen. A random hint and background image are selected, and the process begins to asynchronously load the targeted scene. Once loaded, the loading screen fades to black, and the next scene fades in. Now, because loading between scenes is an integral part of most games, I've included a link to download my loading manager script in the description. Also, I've made it so that absolutely no additional setup is required. Just chuck it into your project folder and run this command to fade to a new scene. Now it was finally time to start working on the AI for the enemies in my game. What's that you say? I've already done that? Well, yes, but actually no. That was a hack together solution, which used enums and switch statements. And whenever I looked at that dirty code, it made me feel like taking a shower. Now, don't get me wrong. While this might be a suitable approach for a smaller game, it's generally better to either use a behavior tree, or in my case, a finite state machine. Without much thought, I did the reasonable thing and created my own state machine using interfaces. However, after looking around at other implementations, I came across Unity's pluggable AI solution, which uses scriptable objects. And you know how much I like those. While these both achieved the goal of organizing my code much better, it still felt wrong handling animation separately because in all of my cases, an animation was tied to a particular state. In some cases, state changes were even dependent on when an animation ended, and this meant having to add animation events at the end of each animation. I then remembered commenting on one of Ben's devlogs a while back when he implemented his own finite state machine, and suggested that this could be achieved using Unity's built-in mechanism and state machine behaviors, which are derived from scriptable objects. I had never personally attempted this before, but knew it was possible because of an article I read which discussed this repurposing of Unity's animator. What I did to achieve this was create a state in an animator controller for each state the enemy could be in, and when necessary, nested them in sub-state machines. I then connected these states via transitions, and finally attached state machine behaviors to each state with the same name as it. Now that I had this, I could simply copy over my existing code into each of the relevant state machine behavior methods. 
Because Mechanim isn't particularly designed for this though, there were a couple of hurdles I needed to overcome. The first being that transitions now had durations, and so methods executed in a counterintuitive order. If a transition was not zero, the next state's enter event triggered before the current state's exit event, and update events for both states were also executed at the same time during the transition. This was easily fixed though by inheriting from the scene linked state machine behavior script which a Unity staff member had shared on the forums. Another issue is that substate machines work very strangely, because they clone over their behaviors to each of their nested states. I still need to look into a workaround for that, but right now it doesn't really affect me. For all intensive purposes though, this solution has worked out for me, but I'm still learning and would love to hear what you all came up with for your own games, so make sure to leave a comment below. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed or learned something, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to follow along on the development of this game. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.